the Havilland Comet was the world's first commercial airliner which was developed and manufactured by the Havilland in the United Kingdom. It offered a relatively quiet, comfortable passenger cabin and was commercially promising in its 1952 debut. However, this aircraft had a fatal flaw in its design which caused it to rip apart in mid-air and crash. In this video, we'll get an understanding of how the square windows of the De Havilland Comet caused it to rip apart in mid-air and crash. Within a year of this aircraft entering airline service, problems started to emerge. Three of these aircraft crashed within 12 months of it entering in service. Three of these aircraft suffered catastrophic damage in the air, which resulted in the aircraft being ripped apart in mid-air. Two of these crashes resulted from structural failures, which resulted in these aircraft being grounded and tested extensively for flaws. The De Havilland Comet can cruise at up to 42,000 feet. At those altitudes, that means that the aircraft had to be pressurized for passenger comfort and safety. As an aircraft ascends to high altitudes, atmospheric pressure decreases. It would be very hard to breathe at these altitudes, so the aircraft is kept pressurized. This meant that the pressure inside the aircraft is higher than the outside air pressure which causes the fuselage of the aircraft to expand ever so slightly as it climbs to higher altitudes. This expansion causes stress to develop in the structure of the aircraft. Stress in engineering is defined as the internal forces acting through the cross section of a material. Stress is represented by the Greek letter sigma and it is the internal forces of the material divided by the cross-sectional area of that material. Consider a piece of metal that is perfectly symmetrical. If we subject this piece of metal to an external force, the stresses developed inside the metal would be evenly distributed throughout its entire cross-section. Let's consider the same piece of metal but with a square window in it. The stresses developed are now not evenly distributed. Instead, they are squished together, especially around the corners of the window. This is called stress concentration, which is a localized area which the stress is greater than the nominal stress of the material. Stress concentration occurs where there are irregularities or abrupt changes in an object's geometry, which causes the stress to be significantly greater than the surrounding region. The stress concentration factor can be calculated using this equation, where the stress concentration Kt is equal to the maximum stress divided by the nominal stress of the cross section. In the case of the de Havilland Comet, which had square windows, it meant that greater stresses developed around the corners of its windows. Over time, the pressurizing and depressurizing of the aircraft led to fatigue of the metal and cracks started to form which went unnoticed until one flight, the airplane ripped apart in mid-air. From these images, we can see how the aircraft ripped apart right around the corners of the windows, which prompted all of these aircraft to be redesigned. Since then, rounded windows were tested, and it was found that there were less stress concentrations in a round window design. And it can be seen that the stress line flows around the change in geometry more smoothly. Pretty much all jetliners now have rounded windows because of these incidents. And these incidents have allowed engineers to have a better understanding of stress concentrations when designing not only aircraft but also civil structures as well. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope when you see an aircraft window now, you know why it <laughs> wow. Wow. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys. I hope when you see an aircraft window now, you get to appreciate why it's an oval shape and not any other shape such as a square, a triangle or any other shape. So this just goes to show that 
even the little minute things have to be taken into account in order to ensure a safe design. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, for more content, please follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and also like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content. Until then, I'll see you next time.